Kesh, the Sridhar uh, Giridharan to the audience. Thank you, ma'am. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. K.S. Giridharan, Professor, Department of Engineering Education from NITPR uh, Chennai. So he has been working in uh, NITPR Chennai since 2003. And he is in uh, major areas of expertise are management engineering education, the RBT levels, e-content design and online teaching, outcome-based education and accreditation, uh, instructional strategies, e-content design and development. And he is also an, uh, has a lot of publications, uh, research papers, book publications, and he also has uh, two patents in his name. Additionally, he is also having a lot of uh, consultancy projects uh, in which Unnath Bharat Abhiyan is one of the on, uh, there are two ongoing projects. So Unnath Bharat Abhiyan and TOT for uh, TNRTP. And he has also uh, done a lot of uh, training programs, workshops, and even in uh, YouTube, there are a lot of videos on uh, e-content de e design. So welcome you, sir. You may please take over the session. So thank you, madam. Thank you very much for your kind words. And I hope I am audible. Am I audible? Can you hear me, participants? Yes, sir. Oh. So, okay. um, so I take this opportunity to thank uh, the um, authorities of Sri Venkateswara College of Engineering for uh, giving me an opportunity to deliver a lecture on design of question paper to the training program funded by Anna University. Um, I think there are around uh, 30 participants. Okay, We'll start this session. <clears throat> so let me share my screen. So I hope my screen is visible to the participants. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So friends, uh, the topic for today uh, is uh, for the next one hour or one and a half hours, we'll be discussing in detail how to design a question paper for uh, the outcome-based education scenario. So as teachers, we might be knowing how to frame question paper. And we have been framing question papers all these years. And as students also, we have uh, we have written examinations for these question papers set by our uh, seniors or by our teachers. But we need to know how the question paper is quite different from the exterior education system with that of the South based education system. Because wherever uh, we go in the country, we come across the word outcome based education. And uh, this has become talk of the town. And everybody talks about outcome-based education. But in uh, in a nutshell, if you want to see whether outcome-based education has been practiced or not, that's a billion-dollar question. So we need to know uh, what exactly is outcome-based education. And if at all we know what exactly is outcome-based education, then only we'll come to know how the question papers are to be designed and how the teaching methodologies are to be rephrased or redesigned by the teacher for uh, handling the uh, students sitting before us. <clears throat> so uh, we will be uh, touching upon the following areas. So let me type the important points that will be discussed. So we will be discussing what exactly is outcome-based education. So an introduction with regard to OBE will be uh, discussed in detail. So which many of you should be knowing, many of you should have framed outcomes. Anyhow, uh, for a span of about 5 to 10 minutes, we will come to know what exactly is an outcome and how the outcomes are to be framed. Okay, So that has to be kept in mind. So first, that, that topic will be discussed in detail. And after that, we will also look into the learner characteristics because uh, we need to understand the learner characteristics of the students. So based on that only, I will be able to set a question paper. So uh, if you ask me like in a class, uh, whether we do we have a homogeneous set of learners or a heterogeneous group of learners, 
everybody will be saying that we do have a heterogeneous group of learners because every student will be having their own kind of learning style and they have their own kind of learning characteristics so given that scenario uh, is it possible for a teacher to frame different different questions for different set of students or how are we going to frame a question so the most important thing that we need to keep in mind is first after framing outcomes we need to know what exactly are the learner characteristics so that one in a brief uh, for a far about span of 10 to 15 minutes we'll be discussing the learner characteristics so after discussing the learner characteristics then we will actually get into this question paper design so many of you should be uh, framing questions and you will be framing questions and you say that uh, the questions fall under this level k1 level k2 level or remember level understanding level and so on but do we uh, really need such kind of levels for this ob era or not or whether these levels are applicable for outcome based education or do these levels have become obsolete under outcome based education or not that is what we are going to see so these are uh, the three prominent areas that we will be touching upon in uh, the next one hour or so. Uh, so I, I request the participants to uh, interact with me. So in case if there is any technical issue from my side or if you are unable to hear my voice. So rather than typing and uh, posting the messages in the chat window, kindly alert me over uh, uh, kindly alert me orally so that I will be able to uh, rectify the glitch uh, as and when required. Okay, so now let us start the uh, session. Okay, we will go for uh, the first component, so which is the outcome based education, because uh, we know this topic is designing question paper for outcome based education. First one is let us see what exactly is an outcome. So, first, let us see what exactly is an outcome here. So, when I talk about outcome, when we ask outcome, so people say that uh, the outcome is something like what kind of uh, benefit that the student is going to get out of this training program or out of this uh, classroom learning. So that exactly is called as an outcome. So, so when I uh, I take a few examples here, and uh, with these examples, we will try to find out what the, what exactly is an outcome and how the outcome is different from the the exterior education system or the type of education system which that we underwent so okay now let us have a sm small example here so i i just frame the statement like this at the end of the session at the end of the session the students will be able to solve Okay, the students will be able to solve will be able to solve an engineering problem okay, will be able to solve an engineering problem so uh, let the problem be um, any problem okay so this being a civil engineering discipline i hope the problem can be a civil engineering problem but basically i am an electrical engineer so from my perspective let it be an engineering from let it be an uh, and uh, an electrical engineering problem or the same civil engineering problem we'll come to that later <clears throat> so i have a session i have a uh, statement like this and uh, this statement uh, i perceive this statement to be an outcome statement because this statement envisages what the student is going to do after the end of the session so I want the students to solve an engineering problem and what are they going to do? When are they going to solve the engineering problem towards the end of the session? Okay, now let me rephrase the same statement and then I will put it this way. After successful completion of the lesson, after successful completion of the lesson, the students will be able to solve an engineering problem. 
duyurdum sağlam bilgileri. So I have two statements here. Okay, so one is the first statement says at the end of the session the students will be able to solve an engineering problem. The second statement says after successful completion of the lesson, the students will be able to solve an engineering problem. So let us uh, see how this uh, whether the two statements, which among these two statements, which one will be the most appropriate uh, outcome statement? Which one will be the most appropriate outcome statement? That is what we are going to see right now. So I will go to a form here. So, okay. So uh, let me uh, copy this statement. So at the end of this session. Let me copy this one. And then I will paste it here. This is statement one. This is statement one. Okay. So next one is I will copy the second statement. Let me copy the second statement and then you do have two statements. You do have two statements here. So one is the first statement is okay. so which statement is an outcome statement okay. which is so the question is which statement is outcome statement so we do have uh, options here so let me add options so option one is statement one so let me go for statement one and option two is statement two and option three is both Option four is none of the above. So let me uh, share this one and then uh, let me share this one. I will copy this one and then I will post it in the chat window. So I request the participants to. Uh, Click this form and then give me your answers. So kindly read this question. So I have got one response. So at the end of the session, the students will be able to solve an engineering problem. So after successful completion of the lesson, the students will be able to solve an engineering problem. Which statement is an outcome statement? So how many people are responding? Let us wait for a couple of minutes. So I request the participants to uh, share their responses. So we have got two responses. So at least some 25 percentage people are responding. I'll be very happy. So we have got four responses. Fine, very good. So five, amazing. So I think there are around 42. So let us wait for around some eight to ten responses. So another three more. Okay, fine. Six responses we have got. Seven, fine. So another one more we will write fine. So we will see how the uh, so so fortunately none of them have uh, marked none of the above. So I'm so happy in that. So 50% of the statement, 50% of the people are of the feel that the second statement becomes the second statement is more or less an appropriate is more or less an outcome statement. And um, few people are of the field that 20% um, of the people are of the field that the first statement is an outcome statement, whereas uh, nearly 30% of the people are of the field that uh, uh, both the statements, statements one and two, could be uh, treated as an outcome statement. 
okay so now uh, let us see uh, how exactly this outcome statement and uh, what exactly is which exactly is an outcome statement and which is not an outcome statement only among these two only one is an outcome statement if one is considered as an outcome statement uh, what about the other one what about the other statement so the other statement is an outcome statement or it is some other statement which is uh which is mostly deceiving in nature or it makes the people believe that this is also an outcome statement so let us see uh, that one in detail so when i uh, look at these two statements okay when i look at these two statements one prominent characteristic of an outcome is your outcome is always focusing on okay your outcome always focuses on performance okay your outcome never compromises on performance that is what literature says when you look at the outcome based literature outcome uh, based education related literatures it clearly indicates that the performance cannot be compromised but at the same time when the performance cannot be compromised and what exactly can be compromised here in the case of an outcome you can compromise time so the time is getting compromised here okay. so when i look at the first statement the first statement is more or less time specific so which in turn indicates that the first statement may not be an outcome statement okay so it clearly says uh, after this end of the session the student should be able to solve an engineering problem so okay, so when i look at that perspective so given a 15 minutes class or a one hour class so after one hour or 15 minutes every student should be able to solve an engineering problem that is what is being emphasized in the first statement but whereas when you look at the second statement that time duration has been compromised or the time duration has been uh, adjusted in such a way that it says whoever claims to have successfully completed the lesson they should be able to solve the problem so which means if a student is a, claims that he has completed the lesson in one hour he should be able to solve that engineering problem when a student claims to have successfully completed the lesson after one week he should be able to solve he should be able to solve an engineering problem <clears throat> so when you look at uh, these when you look at these things so it clearly says that your outcome is mostly performance oriented and time is getting compromised here whereas the previous statement which is more or less uh, uh which is more or less uh, which more or less resembles like that of an outcome statement is not actually an outcome statement but it it is an objective statement here because when you look at an objective in the case of an objective the time is not getting compromised okay the time is always given due importance because objectives uh, for objectives the time is the driving factor but in the case of an outcome the performance is the driving factor but in the, here what happens the performance is getting compromised in the case of an objective but in the case of an outcome the time is getting compromised whereas performance is not getting compromised here so these two things we need to keep in mind so the first statement when you look at the first statement solve an engineering problem the second statement also solve an engineering problem is here the core component remains the same but the prefix claims that the second statement is more or less an appropriate outcome statement when compared to that of the first one here when compared to that of the first one i hope this point is clear to you so when you look at an outcome okay you i will just show you another one example from uh, the nba thing many of you should have seen your program outcomes so let us go to this program outcome and then you see the program outcome it says that we all know that the degree program is completed within four years but they are not specifying that one here it does not say that after the end of fourth year or after uh, three years of the degree program the students will be able to or the graduates will be able to so that point is not getting emphasized here so they have used the word engineering graduates which means a person who claims to be an engineer after four years or after five years or after six years or after four and a half years he should be able to uh, do all these things he should be able to possess all these things or he should be able to exhibit this kind of behaviors so this is what is uh, this is what is being emphasized in your program outcomes
so when i look at any outcome your outcome in a nutshell it is all performance oriented and time is getting compromised here so that is what i said uh, we don't know whether uh, in the name of outcome based education are we really following outcome based education or do we have uh, uh, a different type of education but we call that as an outcome based education so these are the two things that we need to keep in mind now second one is when i look at an objective based education and when you look at an outcome based education your objective based education is more or less content specific okay so here when i look at uh, your uh, objective based education your objective based education is more or less content specific but whereas in the case of an outcome based education your outcome based education is more or less context specific so there is a, a difference huge difference between this content uh, specific outcomes and uh, or the content specific components and whereas context specific component there are uh, uh, there are a lot of difference here so now you see that uh, when i when i ask this thing okay when i ask this content and context um, so when i join this session okay uh, my people were uh, discussing i mean the previous resource person was discussing stress strain and other things there so i left the session and then i get rejoined later and um, we know that uh, uh when i want to represent stress okay some greek symbol is being used okay when i want to represent stress some greek symbol is being used and when i want to represent strain some other symbol is being used similarly in each and every uh scientific parameters so we do have different different notations or some representations are being used either from uh, uh the greek uh, letters or we use greek letters or use english alphabets and so on for uh, for denoting that uh, parameter for denoting that parameter so when i talk about outcome based education how we are supposed to handle that one or how we are supposed to assess the knowledge of the student whereas in the case of an objective based education how am i supposed to measure these things so let me quote a small example from uh, uh, from my personal experience okay so uh, the thing here is okay so we all know that okay when i take ohm's law okay when i take ohm's law when i ask ohm's law we had a sort of study uh, in one of the uh, engineering institution in karnataka we asked the students to write ohm's law the third year students to write ohm's law so they wrote the mathematical expression for ohm's law because uh, the circuit branch students they they know uh, what exactly is ohm's law and many of you should be knowing what exactly is ohm's law so they said that v is equal to ir is a mathematical representation then we asked uh, the students what does v stands for and uh, they said that it stands for voltage okay then what is i stands for <coughs> then they said that it stands for current okay then what exactly is r okay then uh, they said that it is resistance okay. and so we are quite happy that uh, the students were able to give the correct answer so this uh, this thing happens now with the students were asked okay why i is used for current okay so because there is a logical connection between v and v and r and r but why i is used for current okay why i is used for current here so believe it or not the third year students were also unable to give the correct answer and uh, the final year students were also unable to give a correct answer we experimented this one with the electronic students we experimented this one with the triple e students and we also uh, experimented with uh, the mechanical engineering students because everybody will be learning the basics of electrical engineering in their first year so we just wanted to know why i is represented for uh, current but many of the students they gave an answer that uh, the c word the c letter cannot be used for current because c is used to represent capacitance okay so they gave that justification okay they gave that justification that c is used to represent capacitance so therefore i cannot be i will not be able to use the word i will not be able to i will not be able to use the word c because c is already taken by capacitance okay c is already taken by capacitance now uh, we just phrase rephrase the question in such a way that 
So in English, there are around 26 alphabets. Okay, so there are around 26 alphabets. Uh, let us assume that you have this voltage is there, V is taken, R is taken, and C is also taken. So if I remove these three alphabets, so there should be around 23 alphabets. So the remaining is 23 alphabets. Among these 23 alphabets, they could have used some other alphabet. Why specifically they went for I? Okay, what is the reason why they went for I? They could have taken J or they could have taken A because the uh, unit of current is ampere. So A and A could have been matching. So why is that they went for I and rather not uh, the other letters? So here, the students were unable to give a correct answer. So probably you can uh, Google it and you will get to know the correct answer here. So let me not uh, uh, go into the uh, intricacies or go into the justifications of why I is used for uh, current. So now the question here is, uh, there is a difference between this engineering uh, problem or any anything here. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is, the first one is when we ask the students to write the content related matters, many of the students will be able to write the content related matters at ease and uh, they will be able to uh, solve any problem. They will be able to solve any textbook problem. They will be able to solve any reference book problem. Uh, even though the parameters or the values are getting changed, these people will be able to do that one. So all these things are uh, all these things are uh, uh, like what I am trying to say here is um, the students have already been exposed to these things, content related things, and they will be able to do that one. Okay, they will be able to do that one. And that is what most of our education system is doing. Okay, so when you look at uh, the education system, especially the engineering uh, system in the country, we primarily focus on the textbook oriented components and rather rather than real time problems okay rather than real time problems but the same is not happening with uh, the other kind of education system you take a medicine education system where the students are made to deal with patients okay so when they come to know that that certain person is sick and they need to identify what is the reason for his sickness so probably you cannot attribute the same factor for some other patient who was also having the same kind of disease here but this person should be having some other uh, medical complications or this person should be having some other kind of things some other kind of uh, exposures so because of which he became sick and therefore, uh, he has to be treated quite differently when compared to that of the uh, other one. Okay, when compared to that of the other one. So it was said that a few of my friends were saying, who are uh, staying abroad, were, say, were of the field that they said that in some countries, okay, so when they take the corona vaccine, okay, so everybody have been um, uh, take uh, have been vaccinated, and when they took when they take the vaccine. Uh, they have a list of, uh, so after taking the vaccine, they they just ask the blood group of this patient and they say that uh, if you are B positive, you will be having this kind of uh, side effects or you will be facing this kind of, uh, like say, uh, fatigue or some kind of thing. Or if you are an A positive person, you will be having this kind of, uh, uh, I mean, like issues here after taking vaccination for a, for a span of about one to two days, you will be experiencing these kind of issues. So you need to overcome this one. So that kind of data they are having. So what I am trying to say here is when the textbook content is being taught to the students, the students are good in memorizing the content. The students are good in understanding the content. But when the same textbook content, when the student is made to apply in real time scenario, that may or may not happen in an engineering education or an engineering system. But whereas in the other types of education, you take uh, um, uh, a legal system, you take uh, say a law, you take accountancy and uh, you take CA examinations. Very recently, we also conducted uh, CA examinations and I happened to go through the question papers uh, uh, set by the uh, um, uh, the ICFI people or uh, the competent authority for assessing the um, the CA people. So there, the questions were all uh, only few questions were there. There are only five to six questions, and these questions were all case study based questions. 
so it is not a direct question like how uh, what is this one and what is that one uh, what is strain and what is uh, st stress uh, differentiate stress and strain name the law that connects uh, uh, that that uh, that uh, that is establishing a meaningful relationship between stress and strain so like that these kind of straightforward questions are not there so these kind of straightforward questions are mostly relevant for objective based education system but in the case of an outcome based education system we cannot ask such kind of questions because we, when we are asking such kind of questions we are mentally preparing the students towards content based scenario and not context based scenario so when i look at an outcome your outcome is more or less context oriented and whereas your objective is more or less content oriented okay so if you ask me like whether content is no more required uh, i would say no so now in the sense content is very much required without content i cannot go in for context but all the time i cannot focus on content by uh, by focusing on content i will lose grip over the context so you need to uh, properly balance the content and context scenarios but an engineer being an applied uh, uh, person like um, most of the things he will be able to he or she will be able to apply that one so that person should be able to focus more on the context based scenario and not on context based content based scenario when you uh, when you look at your question paper when you look at your question paper you will come to know 99.9% of the questions in your question paper are mostly focusing on content specific questions only so uh, a problem will be there the parameters might have been changed or the conditions might have been changed but the student will be able to solve the problem and uh, when you look at uh, the definitions mostly it is all very basic definitions and when you look at some kind of questions they will mostly focus on the derivation kind of things they will ask you to prove this thing they will ask you to do that one all these things are basic questions all these things are basic questions but the real outcome based question is something we should focus on the context based ones and not content based on context based ones okay so this one i hope this point is clear so when you look at these two things okay when you look at these two statements here when i look at this engineering problem this engineering problem should be focusing on the content part whereas this engineering problem should be focusing on the context part okay we'll be focusing on the context part okay <clears throat> right now uh, i will just tell you another one example where uh, we uh, wanted to test the material science people and uh, for which uh, uh, we asked the students to uh, do the kind of analysis here. So we told the students, like, uh, assume that this are going to become railway engineers. Okay, so these students are going to become railway engineers, and uh, when they become railway engineers, they are going to uh, uh, they are going to assuming that they are going to uh, lay railway lines. Okay, so now we know that uh, when we lay railway lines there is a small gap okay there is a small gap between the rails and we all know that that gap is being uh, introduced to accommodate the uh, the rail extension during summer season because we always know that steel expands on heating and during summer season when there is uh, uh, heat energy uh, excessive heat energy the steel in the rail might expand and to accommodate that expansion process i am just uh, introducing a gap to avoid this derailing of these uh, railways so uh, okay now this has been the situation okay now the student let us assume that the student is in the process of laying railway line um, maybe in south india okay now the student goes to kenya okay for some reason and there also uh, he has to uh, perform the role of the railway line engineer and he also uh, tries to lay the railway line over there and we know that kenya is an equatorial region and uh, mostly the african countries uh, are uh, prone to very heavy uh, inclement weathers and uh, the summer season especially should be very hot so maybe or if the student is going to gulf region for laying railway lines so how they are going to construct a railway line so the question here is what the student has to do if the student is going to construct a railway line using the same material that is being used in india 
but what should be the amount of gap okay so let us assume that in the railway line that is being laid in india the gap is almost around one and a half inch now or uh, two inches now whether the student should be leaving the same two inch uh, in that case in the case of uh, the railway line that is being laid in the gulf countries or they should go in for an increased one so they, everybody said that we should go in for an increased one. So that everybody, any person can say, okay, even a layman will be able to say that one. But what will be the percentage of increase? So we gave some uh, values, the, the properties of steel and other things, and we wanted to calculate what could be the percentage of uh, expansion happening over there. And we gave the values like, um, the uh, the meteorological values the, the rmd um, uh, department values the meteorological department value, like what is the weather what is the weather and what is the average uh, temperature and uh, what will happen over there and uh, how these things uh, can be tackled all these things we gave them okay. so so we gave two set of questions one is for a railway line that is being laid in the gulf country the other one is for a railway line that is being laid in this Scandinavian region, okay, that is being laid in this Scandinavian region, like very closer to the Arctic region, assuming that the student, the student is uh, laying a railway line uh, in Sweden, okay, or Norway, Finland or something. So what could be the amount of gap provided the same material is being used? So uh, when you look at these kind of questions, so these kind of questions will clearly indicate that dash expands on heating so everybody will say steel expands on heating or, or steel dash on heating contracts are expands so there is a direct question we all know that the steel expands on heating or steel con uh, contracts and cooling but to what extent it extends it expands on heating and what should be the amount of gap and uh, how the amount of gap has to be calculated because that is what is actually expected out of an engineer when he moves out of the institution so when I go out of an institution, nobody is there to test me the same laws and theorems that I have learned in the books. But they want to really know how best I am able to apply these laws and theorems in calculating certain values and in designing certain uh, certain components over there. So uh, these things we need to keep in mind. So these are the two examples that I got just thought of sharing like how the uh, the engineering problem okay how your engineering problem uh, varies from an actual textbook based scenario with that of a real time scenario okay, with that of a real time scenario so when i go in for that kind of uh, problems when i go in for that kind of question statements which is really going to test the uh, the real uh, apply level of these students uh, which is going to really it is going to really tell the students that uh, how these uh, uh, questions are going to uh, make the students mentally prepare themselves for outcome based education that is what we need to uh, we need to inculcate in the classroom so for that one only this uh, design of question paper is being used so we have seen the basics of uh, the outcome based education now let me go into the uh, learner characteristics of uh, this thing so the learner characteristics, I will not go deep into this learner characteristics because that itself is a huge uh, area. So we did, uh, in 2018 or 19, okay, before the onset of pandemic, maybe in the month of December or November 19, I think so, uh, I was fortunate enough to attend a conference sponsored by Coursera. So in the Coursera uh, uh, conference which was sponsored by those people so they were uh, they have come there they were sharing some interesting findings so the findings are like they were saying that the students sitting before us okay the students sitting before us uh, are mostly digital natives because these students might have been born after 2000 okay so the students who were born after 2000 they were all having some kind of uh, learner characteristics okay some kind of characteristics which is quite different from that of us so we are all digital immigrants we were all born in an analog era but uh, students who are uh, maybe the first batch of students might have uh, uh, might have rolled out the digital natives might have moved out of the institution or uh, by 2021 so these people say that these people were uh, this digital natives people the early digital natives because uh, and during that time only the internet got uh, 
uh, pervaded into our uh, uh, life okay so everybody started using emails and everybody started browsing uh, websites using websites designing websites and so on but they say that uh, by 2008-2009 and all mm, the, a new set of people were born and these people are right now in their uh, middle schools and in their secondary schools okay so these people when they come into our uh, classrooms okay when they enter into the engineering classrooms definitely the uh, the teaching and uh, the testing methodology has to get changed for a simple reason because these people are neo digital natives okay and neo digital natives so what are these people why these people are called as neo digital natives and uh, uh, when these people were born the smartphones almost entered into our lives so when the smartphones came into our lives when the parents were working they gave the smartphone to the kid and the kids they started to learn things on their own so there was uh, because their learning style themselves have changed itself has changed but when we were uh, imagine a scenario when i was when i joined be uh, in gindi engineering college uh, that was the first time i was seeing a, a computer system a monochrome system we were seeing and uh, in rcc we were having that kind of uh, labs and um, we were asked to do this basic programming so okay so we were struggling a lot and we were seeking the help of uh, uh, the 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 tutors and the uh, research scholars who were there to help us like how to go about we do not know what to do and we started copying each and everything right from the system boots you will be having that energy star symbol all these things those things and all uh, our except computer science students okay uh, who did their computer science in their uh, plus two the other students especially like me who are not from the city uh, who are from uh, uh, from the rural background we do not know we we were first time we were looking at a system and we were seeking the help of the teachers to teach us how to handle the system how to boot it all these things we were uh, we were uh, asking them to do uh, help us okay so some more other uh, we learned that things and uh, we were asked to write programs for uh, ascending orders descending orders all these things we were asked to write but now you look at the same thing okay you look at the same scenario the students they themselves do things on their own okay so they they, they do things on their own they learn things on their own when they have any doubts they go to youtube and then they clarify their doubts and all these things they are doing okay all these things they are doing here so the learning style of the student is getting changed now when these students when they come and sit before us in the classroom if their expectation is not being met and if their doubts are not being clarified now what will happen the students may not be interested in attending your sessions the students will not be interested the students will not be interested in attending and the students will not be interested in attending your sessions and at the same time uh, the students they uh, when you when you look at the way they play the games the coursera study says that they are more interested in taking up more challenges okay so in the challenges in the game in the gamification itself they are least bothered to play the same game but rather they expect a sort of variety here so when they want a kind of variety and uh, they right now the younger generation students they are creating games okay so in any gamification platform they create their own games and uh, using that games they they play and uh, uh, people play and so on so mostly the present generation students who are in the classrooms the neo digital natives they are having a good level of uh, apply level and they they focus on the real time scenarios so for this kind of people when the classroom okay for this kind of people when the classroom is not fulfilling their expectations and most importantly when they are being tested okay when they are being tested when they are being asked the same rudimentary questions some students might get puzzled and they will not be interested in learning the questions so uh, we need to understand the learning characteristics of the students and depending upon the learning characteristics only you will be able to design a set of questions and of course i do agree that your classroom will be filled with a heterogeneous group of learners and 
this heterogeneous group of people i cannot frame different different questions but rather by looking at the majority of the learners okay when the majority of the learners are at the highest level then i can frame that kind of questions so imagine a scenario like uh, a classroom is filled with research scholars a classroom is filled with the master students and a classroom is filled with uh, uh, bachelor's program bachelor's degree students so if i ask a defined level question or if i ask uh, an understanding level question it might be uh, an absurd level question or it might be a very basic level question for the masters and for the uh, the research scholar students who are doing their coursework but on the other hand when i ask a higher level of question like let's say for example i am going to uh, design a handle for a milk pan so uh, given this kind of material i am going to heat this pan for a span of about 15 minutes what should be the length of the handle okay what should be the length of the handle so when i ask that kind of question so probably that may not uh, uh, help the students uh, help the bachelor level students because they might be of the field that this is a higher level of question and this question is not going to uh, this has not been taught in the class and therefore they will they will normally try to avoid this kind of question but for the other set of learners this question will try to uh, entertain them or uh, this will try to agitate them so because they will be uh, more interested in solving that kind of question and they want to see what could be the length of the handle of the milk pan that is to be uh, done here okay so so this thing we need to this thing we need to keep in mind okay fine so what i am trying to say here is so when we uh, look at the learner characteristics also the learner characteristic should also be taken into consideration okay the learner characteristic should also be taken into consideration when we are designing questions the learner characteristic should also be taken into consideration when we are handling sessions in the classrooms so we are focusing more about what the questions here so now let us focus on the question component here so uh, we having framed the outcomes and having understood and having understood the learner characteristics okay having framed the questions and having understood the learner characteristics what the teacher has to do here the teacher has to frame some set of questions now when i am framing the set of question how the questions are to be framed and how the question is going to really help the student community like uh, in the sense how the question is going to become an eye opener for the student and how the question is going to really make the students apply their learned content in real time scenario so for this one i will uh, just share you one uh, famous uh, set of question asked by uh, the iit madras people so this one is So uh, this is the question. So you must tell me. I hope many of you should have heard about this question. So you must do any based question paper question in IIT Madras question paper. Okay, so I will just copy this one. so this question was asked this is one of the famous question for uh, material and energy balances the subject title is course title is material and energy balances and it was asked on may 6 2019 and uh, it's an end end examination question and uh, it carries almost around uh, the end sum point is almost around 40 points so answer the following questions so the first question is dew can play a major role in day and night cricket matches excessive dew in the outfield makes the wall, ball wet for spinners the challenge is to grip the wet ball and to impart spin while delivering for fast bowlers it is difficult to hit the desired length hence this can put the fielding team at a disadvantage so now they have given you some conditions so during ipl 2019 okay during ipl 2019 Chennai Super Kings are likely to play a qualifier in Chepak Stadium on May 7. So this question was asked in May 6 and you see the question was they are talking about a scenario on May 7. As per the weather forecast for May 
the relative humidity in chennai is expected to be 70 degrees 70 percentage the temperature at the start of the game is predicted to be 39 degrees celsius at the beginning of the second innings the temperature is expected to drop to 27 degrees celsius based on this info if ms dhoni wins the toss would you recommend batting or fielding first justify your answers note points will not be awarded without the current justification okay so this is one classic example for uh, your uh, uh, higher order question i would put it that way or a question that comes under your outcome based education category okay a question that uh, outcome that, that comes under outcome based education category okay so now that you see do you, uh, you see what could be the answer here so we do not know what will be the answer uh, let us assume that a set of students are trying to answer this question okay a set of students are trying to answer this question so when they answer this question what happens some students will be strongly favoring batting first and some students will be strongly favoring fielding first okay so they will either say that either dhoni has to go in for batting or some somebody will argue that dhoni has to go in for fielding and okay so when they go in for batting what are all the supporting parameters that i am taking into consideration and when i am going for fielding what are all the other parameters that i will be taking for consideration so in both the cases they are taking only the environmental factors into consideration and based on the environmental factors the students decide how the questions how the uh, how the field is going to affect or how the outfield is going to affect how the dew is going to affect the ball gripping and other parameters and how it is going to play an important role in deciding the uh, uh, in deciding the uh, uh, match winning so so the some students who strongly advocate batting first they will be submitting their answers with their uh, uh, with their justifications and some students who are strongly which are, who are totally against okay some students who are totally against this kind of justification uh, who say that fielding has to be opted by ms dhoni so they will uh, submit their uh, uh, arguments and with their justifications okay with their justification here so uh, when i look at such kind of questions which which really takes into consideration the learn parameters and it applies to a new scenario and you try to come out with your prediction your prediction can be right or your prediction can be wrong that's a different answer but when i look at a higher order question or when i look at uh, an unstructured question it is not like it is not a structured question it is mostly an unstructured question when i look at a question which is mostly context based okay when i look at a question which is mostly context based how am i going to uh, how am i going to help the question how am i going to how these kind of questions are going to help the students because these kind of questions will really make the students see that these are some of the scenarios that you might probably experience in your uh, workplace scenario on your workplace and this is where how you are going to apply your learned content in your uh, in your projects or in your real time uh, problems that you are going to face because the entire world is revolving around the technology the more the technology is getting involved the more the people will be using the technology when more people are using technology every people will be having their own issues or problems so when customer problems are there you have to solve the customer problems so how are we going to solve the customer problems using the content that we have learned we will be able to solve the customer problem when i am solving the customer problem so that itself will try to uh, improvise the existing technology so therefore this improvisation will further lead to complicated technology so every now and then you will be coming out with so many issues for which you will be applying the uh, the content related things for solving these issues for solving for addressing the customer grievances so uh, this is how the question has to be framed and always keep in mind when i am going in for um, uh, when i am going in for this kind of questions we cannot have a definite set of questions like uh, like say for example you uh, you have a specific pattern of question papers especially in objective based systems if you do follow a blueprint and you do have a table of specification it clearly tells you like how many questions are to be at the 
uh, remember level, how many questions are to be at the understand level, how many questions are at the, the, the apply level, and so on. But and how the question has to be distributed chapter wise that will also be distributed that will also be uh, put in the form of a tabular column and accordingly you'll be setting questions that is one way of framing questions but on the other hand in the case of uh, an outcome based era how the questions are to be framed so there the questions are entirely different in the sense you may not have a one or two liner questions but rather you will be asked to solve a case study and the student will be able to solve that one and the student has to solve that one and mostly the questions that are being asked in the objective based system and outcome based system there is a um, uh, difference here whereas in the case of an objective based system question the questions will be mostly convergent in nature so every answers will be there will be only one answer for one question so when i am trying to calculate the values of uh, uh, let's say the quadratic equation what happens uh, the quadratic equation questions when i am trying to solve the quadratic equation questions for different values of a b and c i try to get the roots so mostly the roots will be uh, uh, will be more or less revolving around a common point some decimal differences will be there but ignoring those decimal differences you will be having around the same uh, things here but on the other hand when i go for uh, an outcome based question so the questions are normally not to be a convergent oriented question but rather it will be a divergent type of question okay it will be a divergent type of question so when it is uh, mostly divergent type of question so one question will have multiple correct answers so we need to make the students to brainstorm and give us the multiple correct answers and that is what and that is a duty of the teachers when they go in for designing questions especially this outcome based education is concerned so i hope uh, this thing is uh, clear to you i have just given you an outline like uh, how exactly a question has to be framed and uh, uh, how the question will be entirely different from that of the existing system, that of the uh, outcome based system. So, when I go in for an outcome based system, mostly uh, because of academic autonomy, I will be able to frame the set of questions and I will be able to have my unique set of pattern for uh, testing and assessing the students. Uh, but with an affiliated system, it is very difficult to implement outcome-based education. That is my personal opinion because um, we cannot have a rigid pattern and we cannot implement outcome-based education and we cannot test students with regard to this outcome-based education using this rigid pattern. Okay, So let me uh, quickly summarize uh, like uh, what exactly uh, we have discussed in today's uh, afternoon session. I mean... So friends, we discussed uh, two things. One is uh, what are the differences between your outcomes, how an outcome has to be framed and how the outcome is quite different from that of an objective. So we came to know that your objectives are mostly time oriented where performance is getting compromised and your objectives are also focusing on the content part and uh, not on the context part. And we also came to know that your outcomes are mostly performance oriented one where the performance is not getting compromised, but the time is getting compromised here. And having compromised on time, I'll be focusing more on the, uh, the context part and not on the uh, content part. So of course, content is required. So content will be dealt in the class and mostly in outcome based system, we will be seeing how the content is getting applied or how the content is being analyzed and uh, the questions like uh, straightforward questions like uh, so we like um, what is the symbol used for or what is a unit for stress or what is a unit for strain okay so that kind of straightforward questions are to be avoided in the case of outcome based questions so we need to those things are already known to the students but how the students are going to implement that one how the students are going to use that one that is what we are going to uh, encourage and that is what we are going to uh, 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 promote in the classrooms okay so and we also uh, looked at the the learner characteristics of uh, the student community and uh, we came to know that uh, the present generation students seeks more challenges and they are more interested in taking up new challenges and uh, 
having been exposed to some set of questions which are mostly basic in nature and when they are being tested and assessed very frequently in those in the in that particular domain the students will have some kind of boredom and they will not be interested in learning these things so that one uh, they will not be uh, interested in, in assessing in uh, writing the answers also there so that becomes an issue here okay so so we need to take that one into consideration and depending upon the students sitting before us depending upon the uh, the learner styles of the students we need to frame questions so assuming that we know the the learning style of the student and assuming that we know the uh, the uh, we have framed the correct outcome uh, and we have mapped the outcome with that of your program outcomes you should be having that copo mapping we always take into consideration the copo mapping for framing questions for outcome based education but i am not sure like how many of you are framing questions based on copo mapping and uh, and uh, how many of you are framing questions based on the previous year question papers so uh, when we interacted with uh, the uh, faculty members we came to know that normally they set questions based on previous year question papers but rarely they take into consideration the copo mapping but strictly speaking when i want to design a question paper i need to take into consideration the copo mapping and i have to uh, see that uh, in what all cos and what all pos are getting mapped i will be trying to frame questions wherever it is possible i'll be able to frame questions in some cases if i am unable to test the students within that uh, three years i'll be making use of some other kind of uh, assessment methodologies like uh, your uh, assignments or any other kind of thing for uh, testing the uh, for measure for assessing the student community and uh, we have also seen one uh, uh, one iat question and we could have seen that how the questions in iits are being framed and uh, this is one classic example of uh, a question paper uh, or how a question has to be when you are uh, framing questions for outcome based education uh, uh, era okay so uh, so friends i have uh, given you a brief outline of what exactly is um, the outcome based education how the questions are to be framed so probably uh, i will i will stop for now and uh, maybe uh, if the participants or if the people are having any doubts or uh, queries you can unmute yourself and then ask me or else you can also um, uh, post your questions in the uh, chat window i'll be able to um, solve your queries so to the participants yes friends so do you have any queries or doubts okay so if there are no Next. queries uh... i think there are no queries so, so sorry friends i am in home quarantine so so i thought of uh, i already informed your coordinator that i will be able to take session for uh, one hour only so uh, so in case if there are no queries i, I thank the coordinators uh, um, and uh, the authorities of uh, steven gadeswara engineering college uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to address this group of participants and i also take uh, uh, this opportunity to thank uh, our benign director and my uh, staff members for uh, uh, having uh, given permission to uh, deliver a lecture and to act as a resource person for this prestigious uh, faculty development program of anna anna university so thank you thank you one and all and i hand over the session to the uh, coordinators thank you sir thank you very how much how to give justification i think some question is sir how to give justification to outcome based education so what justification you want sir what kind of justification dr sudesh re hello ah uh, yes sir Uh, sir, good afternoon. Uh, ah, good afternoon. Finished, right? sir, actually, uh. I want to know how we can uh, justify in terms mm. of the outcome-based education. I mean, to how we can give the uh, I mean to say the ranking, or if we talk about in practical world, 
Mm-hmm. Then how we can say that this is outcome based education? Uh, so, you are talking about the assessment scenario or a uh, teaching learning methodology scenario, sir? Uh, so, uh, actually, I am talking about the outcome. Uh, it means I mean, I mean to say, suppose uh, one has done the uh, what you can say the four year course of the engineering or the okay, three okay, uh, mm-hmm. course. Then, mm-hmm. in that perspective, how we can say that uh, this is what you can say the outcome based education? uh so many other times if you candidly ask me uh, most of the times we frame outcomes okay? and uh, but unfortunately what happens we are not sticking on to these outcomes uh, because we we frame an outcome but the regular teaching learning methodology happens or uh, revolves around the content only and the testing is also happening around the content this is what our personal experience says when you look at any question paper only in the rarest of rare cases we will be able to see uh, outcome based questions or uh, the when you look at the lesson plans when we go for uh, the audits and other things when you look at the lesson plans also you will come to know that how the lesson plans have been framed and are these lesson plans meeting the expectations of uh, uh, the outcome based education or not if you ask me definitely a big no so uh, it is time to change sir because very recently only we have uh, uh, taken up this concept and uh, almost for around 2014 only i think uh, we we can signatory and uh, we are st- slowly marching towards this obe and uh, it will take some time and the people need to have a proper understanding of what exactly is an outcome if they know what exactly is an outcome and uh, if they use the copo mapping for uh, designing their classroom lectures as well as for assessment methodologies then definitely uh, we can give a proper justification by saying that we are really following outcome based education but this copo mapping and other things are all there in the paper but we are not taking that one into reference for uh, designing our classroom lectures or designing our uh, question papers we it is just used for getting accreditation and not for any other things but if you are using that one for uh, redesigning your lectures and uh, redesigning your question papers definitely we can always justify by saying that uh, we really follow outcome based education because when i use that one there is we cannot deviate from the outcomes so you will the real uh, feel or the real benefit of outcome based education might reach the student community at large and that day is not far away that is what i presume so probably the teachers should be educated on these areas and they should be given training and if they are using the training uh, in a better way they will be able to uh, implement outcome based education and properly justify that ob is being followed in their campus or in their classrooms this would be my answer sir so thank you sir thank you so okay friends uh, i hope so there are no other questions okay so then in that case i will hand over the platform to the coordinators so over to the coordinator thank you sir thank you very much for the uh, interesting and informative session and uh, thank you so much that in spite of your uh, health issues you have uh, kept your word and taken this lecture uh, thank you so much sir thank you madam thank you stay safe and be here Yeah thank you sir thank you very much sir thank thank you madam thank you will be any announcement to the participants you can just uh, tell them